Hello guys, this is uh, a quick video. I'm hoping it's going to be a quick one. It's in regards to the current protests we're seeing right across the UK. Um, basically, a lot of the population is unhappy with the migrants, uh, the people that have come here and effectively the state the country is in partially because of it. And I'm basically here to voice my opinion. Uh, I fully support the Patriots the people that stand behind Great Britain, the people that love Great Britain, the people that love what this country has given to the world, what it has given to so many generations, the inventions it has made, the, the, you know, the advancements it has made in so many different fields, whether it's engineering, medicine, etc. And effectively trying to preserve that as much as possible, okay? Because at the moment, that's not happening. Um, the atrocities that happened in Southport should never have happened. But what do you expect when you actually get people from Africa, from Rwanda, a place in Africa where, you know, people murdering each other was on the news quite a lot in the 90s. You know, it's one of the most violent countries back then so effectively the parents of the murderer migrated to the UK who knows what kind of information and upbringing the child had even though it was born in Cardiff and eventually 17 years later he goes on and kills three innocent girls and then injures however many others this is it guys some people don't integrate some people don't change based on their upbringing based on their roots based on their beliefs and that's why there are so many other people from the middle east africa um, that effectively have come here and they're still effectively imposing their views their religion onto the british public and culture Okay, and we can't keep doing this. We can't keep taking more migrants, illegal or legal, just close the borders. It's not rocket science. Okay, and I'm going to give you a few reasons as to why I believe this should happen now. Close the borders. You can Google the Polish prime minister, and he seems to be pretty much the only person in Europe that effectively has said, look, we have closed the borders, and that's why we've got... Um, no terrorist attacks in Poland that this is why we've got um, you know our hospitals our healthcare is um, you know up to a very high standard etc etc so he basically is pretty much the only one that I can think of uh, that I've researched as, as a prime minister of a country in the European Union or you know um, yeah that effectively stands behind his government um you can call me a far right or you can call me a patriot. I would like to consider myself as a patriot. I love everything British. I love everything English. Um, I want to preserve that. You know, personally, my neighborhood has changed so much over the last five years. There used to be, um, you know, two English families close to my house, effectively one English family opposite me, uh, one on the left-hand side of me, of, of, of the house I live in, and then um a scottish family living on the right hand side um effectively and at the moment on the right hand side five years later so it took five years for the demographic of my whole street really where i live to change the house on my right hand side basically has an afghanistani family now with three children okay opposite me um there's a family of chinese and on the left hand side a family of uh, black people bought the house and turned it into a B&B. They don't live there, but effectively every other day you can get teenagers partying in the house. You can get, um, you know, quiet people. You might not get anyone. So it, it just varies. But basically the demographic of the whole street changed. Now multiply this across the whole country. Okay. Where are the British? Okay, because 
the country we live in doesn't feel like Britain of 10 years ago, it's gone downhill because we have allowed too many migrants and the people have spoken on the streets. They have said, close the borders, get rid of the migrants. Why is it so hard for the prime minister to listen to the public? Why are you protecting the minorities, which are becoming the majority, by the way? Okay, because they are having three and four kids per family, because they are finding it easy to provide for their families, because they do have free accommodation in these hotels, because they do have free food, because they do not pay taxes, because they have come here so easily, because they don't have the skills to contribute to the country. Okay, I'll give you a quick example. The NHS, when you go in the morning before all of the employees go to an, an, an NHS hospital, how many foreigners do we see? Many. I'll give you another example. Jagia Land Rover, one of the biggest employers in the country. When you visit their offices in the morning, you will see buses full of Indians, Pakistanis being dropped off. Are you telling me that our universities here in the UK do not produce quality engineers, quality business personnel. That's not the case. Yet we are still taking people into the country and they're taking our jobs. And this is happening right across Europe, in Italy, Germany, France. Look at the French national football team. South Africa has more whites in their football team than the French. The demographic has changed completely. And look at the joke of the Olympics they've got currently going on. That's not France of 10, 20 years ago. There are more negatives with the Olympics than positives. And it's because of the mentality, the thinking, the French culture has completely changed. That's not France. But it's a bit like, I don't know, I'll make a simple, possibly a silly comparison but it proves the point what happens if you have let's say you order chicken with rice at the restaurant okay chicken with rice so you'd expect the chicken to be of decent size on the plate because you're having chicken with rice now let's compare the rice to the immigrants that come to your country if you put more rice more rice and more rice on the plate what happens is it still chicken with rice or is it rice with chicken? Okay, because the rice outweighs the chicken by a lot. So do you think if that happens to us in the UK, which it is happening in my opinion, do you think the country will retain its identity? Of course it won't. Of course it won't. And let me give you an example again. I keep talking about the Africans. I keep talking about the Middle Easterns. Let me just touch on Islam, okay? I've got this Wikipedia page opened and there are many different videos on YouTube saying Islam is not a peaceful religion and it isn't. It doesn't preach peace. It basically preaches the people around you should become Muslim or they should be executed. They should be converted into, into Muslims. Okay. And again, and, and this is the bit which gets me. Why do people don't learn from history? It's happened right across European history. But it seems that the people don't get it or they forget. Um, and, you know, on a side note, that's probably one of the reasons why at some point in time we might even have World War Three because people forget how bad it was in World War One and World War Two. They think they can just go ahead, start a war and, and, and go through with it. OK, we as People, for some reason, are quite silly because we forget the consequences. Going back to Islam, we have forgotten how aggressive this religion is, okay? And we have it proven in history. You can go to Wikipedia. I will show you two pages now. I've rambled enough, okay? But I will give you two examples of the, atroc uh, the atrocities that we have seen in Eastern Europe. In the 18th and 19th centuries, we have seen it right from the 13th century when the Ottoman Empire, the Muslims, 
currently known as the country of Turkey, uh, went on to Eastern Europe and effectively colonized and enslaved Greece, Serbia, Bulgaria, Croatia, parts of Romania, okay, enslaved, okay, just because the people living in these Eastern European countries are white, doesn't mean that they were not enslaved, they were enslaved, for hundreds of years, a lot more than what the Africans were presumably enslaved for and transported over to the Americas, okay? One of the examples I will give you, possibly the worst, or, you know, the most tragic example, effectively, it happened in a place called Batak. This is in southern Bulgaria. It's known as the Batak Massacre. And it purely says the Batak Massa uh, Massacre is of Bulgarians in the town of Batak by the Ottoman irregular cavalry troops in 1876 at the beginning of the Bulgarian April Uprising. This uprising was as a result of the Bulgarians not wanting to be subjected to that slavery anymore. They wanted to be a free country. Okay. The estimate of the number of casualties ranged from 1,200 to 8,000. Okay. But it's effectively the murders, how they happened, that effectively shocked Europe. And as a result, Britain at the time used to side with Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, quite a lot. But because of the English people's uproar of hearing what happened back in Batak in Bulgaria at that time, they basically made the British government to step aside and not help the Turkish with their economic relations with Russia at the time. And Russia effectively sided with um, the Greeks, the Bulgarians, the Serbians at that time and effectively helped these countries free themselves from the Ottoman rule, okay? If Britain had sided with Turkey, who knows, these countries might not still be free, okay? Britain and Turkey could have defeated Russia. But nevertheless, let me get back to this and show you the atrocities that these Muslim that these Muslims can do. And the problem is it can happen here in the UK. We've seen it with murders, we've seen it with beheadings. That's what they consider to be normal. They think they will go to heaven and Allah will probably praise them because they've killed Christians, Jews, Sikhs, etc. Islam is a very aggressive um, religion. And if we, the minority, well, uh, I'm going to start calling us the white minorities, do in fact become the minority. Do you think the Muslims, the Middle Easterns in this country will give you the same respect, will give you the same rights? No, they'll probably build more mosques. They'll probably destroy the churches, okay? Because this is what's happened in history. Why have we not learned from history? Why are we still allowing um, people from the Middle East to come here? Close the borders. So basically, the situation that happened, you know, you can read this, find it on uh, Wikipedia, read it yourself. I'm not making stuff up, but basically what happened is, um, you know, various villages in Bulgaria at the time, um, you know, the men effectively gathered. They wanted to be part of the uprising and effectively it wasn't a successful uprising as a whole. And loads of um, these people that, you know, these volunteers that wanted to volunteer in the uprising, they started gathering in the town of Batak effectively to hide from um, from the Ottoman soldiers. And effectively what happened was the Ottoman soldiers said, look, we will let you go. We will not harm you as long as you hand in your weapons. Okay? Hand in your weapons and we will let you go for free. Okay? Right. So it basically says, on, May the, uh, on the 14th of May, 1876, uh, those hidden in the house of Bogdan, okay, that you know, apparently was, um, um, yeah, uh, okay, and Ahmed Aga, that's the Turkish slash Ottoman um, leader at the time, 
of um, of the army had pledged to spare them as i mentioned the pledge was not kept in the end more than 200 men women and children okay i highlight the word children were led out stripped out of their valuables and clothes and brutally killed and i'm going to go on and say how exactly they were killed the aga okay asked some of the wealthy men of batak to go to his camp and lay down all of the arms of the villagers as i just mentioned amongst them was the mayor trendafil toshev karelov and his son okay his name's there okay uh they supposedly reached the agreement okay however once the rebels arms had been confiscated all of them were beheaded burnt alive or impaled okay so why would you impale and burn people that have just handed in their weapons and effectively they're waving the white flag saying we've you know we're not fighting anymore with you know we we realize we've been surrendered and 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 effectively we're dropping our arms why would you kill innocent why would you kill them they've lost the war they've lost the uprising okay and if you punish them if you decide to kill them why do it in such a horrific way but that's what islam is that's what the muslims do and they have done it throughout centuries i've got another example with the greek population but let me go back to this very quickly because this is this is what you should be paying attention to okay that shows the violence of the muslims the murder of the leader trendafil karelov was particularly violent as described by the witness his son's wife bosilika bosilka my father-in-law went to meet the bashi bozuk when the village was surrounded and saw ahmed aga who said he required the weapons to be collected from the villagers just just like i said okay uh trendafil went and collected them after they were handed in he was shot with a pistol the ball from which grazed his eye and then heard ahmed aga gave the order with his own lips to impale and roast trendafil the words he used were shishak aor not sure if i'm pronouncing them uh, correctly but meaning in turkish to put on the spit such as in a shish kebab then he was stripped from his money of uh, his clothes were taken his eyes and teeth were put out and he was impaled slowly until the steak came out of his mouth after which they roasted him on the fire he being then alive he lived for half an hour during the awful event and that's not the worst i'll keep reading a number of bulgarian women were present besides myself we were encircled by the bashi buzuks these were effectively the turkish army at the time who hemmed us on all sides so that we were made to see what was done to trendafil okay so this is pure hatred okay pure evil okay similar to the person from rwanda who caused the atrocities in that dance class in southport but these are the people they don't change okay they thought they had more money concealed and was unwilling to give it up and therefore they tortured and killed him one of Bas basilka's children okay so that's trendafil's son vladimir who was still a baby at his mother's breast was impaled on a sword in front of her eyes do i need to go on guys do i really need to go on you can read the rest of it it's horrible horrible okay and this was reported by journalists from the new york herald and the british daily news okay there are other people that hid in the church read about that okay i'm just gonna expand it they burned people alive they made them starve for three days etc just read it okay but this is what the muslims do islam is an aggressive religion where unless you become muslim you will be killed you will be tortured etc we've seen it there and we're seeing it in our streets just close our borders i'm going to give you that quick example there with um with the greeks 
Okay, there's the Greek genocide. Again, Wikipedia. Okay, the Greek genocide, which included Pontic genocide. Pontic is around the Black Sea, basically. It was a systemic killing of the Christian Greek population of Anatolia. Okay, so this is pretty much currently the mainland Turkey, which was carried out mainly during World War I and its aftermath. Okay. It basically says, according to a German military, the Ottoman minister of war, Ismail Enver, had declared in October 1915 that he wanted to solve the Greek problem during the war in the same way he believed he solved the Armenian problem, referring to the Armenian genocide. So again, it goes on. So not only did, it, did, it, did they do it to the Bulgarians, the Greeks, they've done it to the Armenians. And you can check, do I need to go on? Okay. Deaths. 300,000 to 900,000. It is absolutely shocking. And this is just one country. One Muslim country. And you could probably say, whoa, 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 whoa. This is too much and this used to happen back in the day. It doesn't happen now. Well, I beg to disagree. And do you know why? How many Muslim countries are there and how many are flourishing and are in peace? Okay, then look at the ones. A war is always raging in the Middle East. Always, always raging. Look at Gaza, Israel. Look at uh, Syria beforehand. Uh, look at uh, what's going on. Um, Afghanistan with their Taliban um, population. The Muslims keep fighting, okay? They've never stopped fighting. Because Muslim is an aggressive religion. I keep, I keep saying it, okay? So that's why I keep saying, close the borders. Why are we taking refugees? Why are we taking any migrants, illegal or legal? Just stop it. Close the borders. This is not doing any good to our economy. It's not, going, it's not doing any good to us as a society. I've thought about moving out of Britain, okay? Purely because I don't like the society I live in, okay? Honestly, it's, it's just... Why are these, for instance, Hamas Muslims not going to Dubai, Saudi Arabia? Why are they coming here, for instance? Is it because they're not getting the free accommodation, the benefits in Saudi Arabia and Dubai as they would here? There's so many Muslim countries around the Middle East. Why are they traveling to the UK? I think it's for economic reasons. Why are they traveling to Europe, Germany? Possibly learn a new language, live in a Christian country. Why? Why make it difficult for yourself? Stay in the Middle East, but you don't want to, do you? It's because you're economic migrants. You're trying to do the best for yourselves, okay? You're not escaping the, uh, the war. You're basically coming here for some free meals, free accommodation, and rights, yeah? The politicians are killing our country. That's all I wanted to say. Google these atrocities done by the Muslims, and I keep saying the Muslim religion is violent. Do not let Muslims, do not let Africans, do not let Middle Easterns preserve our culture, preserve our nation. Okay? And think about the analogy I gave you, the chicken and the rice. Before I go with the chicken and the rice, I, I will say one thing. Soon the, the Muslims will become the majority. I am absolutely sure of that if things continue in the way they do. Do you know why? Because they're the ones having three and four children per family. Okay? How many are the white British having? One? Two? Maybe? Well, if that continues going on in the, ne in the next 10 to 15 years, which society, which 
type of community is going to be outnumbering the other. I think the Muslims, the blacks, they're going to be outnumbering the whites. Okay? And if you want to live in this society, live in this society. Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak, all of these politicians, even Nigel Farage. He wanted Brexit, okay? The UK came out of Brexit, and where did he go? To I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. He quit the office. So he stopped the culturally similar Europeans from entering the UK. The alcohol drinking Europeans, the Christmas celebrating Europeans. And what are we getting now? Muslims, vandals from the Middle East, from Africa. That's made the problem worse. So that's why I keep saying none of these politicians in the British Parliament are good. Okay? Sorry for this rant, but I keep supporting the rioters. I keep supporting what's happening in our streets because somebody needs to hear it. Okay? We've already seen the two-tiered policing that people have reported. Okay? Take care, guys. All the best, and I hope this country continues to be great. Take care. Bye-bye.